All right. It's time for Chapter 4. I'm pretty psyched about it. Jenny is pretty psyched about it. She's just laying on the garage floor right now. Maybe I'll get her in here in a little bit. Uh, but she's hanging out. She's ready to learn some math about polynomial functions and graphs. Fun fact, Officer Gregorio's favorite math term is polynomials. should ask him about it one time. All righty, let's go. So we're going to identify polynomial functions and their degrees. We're going to graph them. Use some transformations. Love using transformations. Uh, identify our zeros, multiplicity. We're going to analyze. I mean, we're going to do so much with this. It's fantastic. Some of it's review. Some of it will be a little bit more challenging, a little newer. Um, let's go for it. As a recap, we've got our different names. Linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, quintic. Beyond that, we just go nth degree. Okay, so we're talking about the highest degree and we like to write them in descending order in standard form where it starts highest degree and works our way down. All right. So what shape is a quadratic? Um, a quadratic is going to be something. Let me get a, a marker here. Uh, it's going to be a U shape. Or an N if it's negative. Uh, how about a cubic? A lot of times we're talking about it's like an S shape. It's like on its side, right? Um, or that would be a positive. This would be a negative cubic. Positive, negative. Positive, Negative. All right, and how about a quartic? Well, quartic is going to be the W shape. Make sure we don't have any points in there, right? It's all nice and curved. That's a positive. And then when it's an M, that would be our negative quartic. Awesome. All right. Once again, standard form, decreasing degree. Big deal. Okay, it really helps uh, to keep things organized. Always wonderful, a, for, or a very formal definition here. A polynomial function, we have a sub n, x to the n, all right, for that degree, that degree term, and then as we, we go down in decreasing order, that's what this is basically saying here, okay? So we're going down from the highest degree down to our constant a sub zero, okay? Awesome, fantastic. So that might not be that wonderful for you, but let's let's talk about what's a polynomial and what's not a polynomial. So let's look at these uh, five choices we have down here and which one is, which one isn't. Well, things you want to look for are integer exponents, okay? So exponents like one, two, three, so on and so forth. Even zero, because that would be our constant, right? If we have if we have two x to the zero, that's really just two, okay? So we want integer exponents. Well. A would be a, would be a polynomial. Let's ask you which one's not a polynomial. Uh, ooh, here we have a fraction for an exponent, so that is not a polynomial. <clears throat> here we have a negative for an exponent. Negative integers are no good, right? Positive integers or zero. Um, and here would be an example where we have the exponent of zero because there's no x there. x to the zero is one, so we're left with just a negative five, a constant. Over here, it's in factored form, but if we distributed that three s in we would have uh, 6s to the third power minus 3s. That is absolutely a polynomial, so I'm not going to circle that. I almost didn't follow directions. So only those two, the negative exponent, the fraction exponent, we're good. So this next example here has a couple parts. One, we're going to match the graph using the end behavior, and then we're going to do a little, little extra math down here about the leading term in number three. So let's see here. I have a positive cubic function, and we know that looks like the S, and it's ending up to the right. So positive, it's going up and to the right. This would be part or letter C here. Um, for number two, it's a negative cubic. So that means it's ending going down and to the right, which would be B. That's this one right here. And then for the last one, Obviously, we you know process of elimination, but I can see that I would have a degree of two and a degree of two if I were to foil this out and multiply all together, I get a degree of four. That is a quartic function, and it's negative, so negative quartic. It's going to be that M shape pointing down, right? The upside down W. Boom, wonderful CBA. That's Carry Basketball Association when I was growing up shooting hoops in fourth grade. You know, I could dunk. No, I never could dunk. I, I never will be able to, uh, except on like the really short rim. All right. What is the leading term of number three? So you could go through a, a terrible process of just foiling everything out, multiplying, distributing, and just wanting to cry. I'd rather not want to cry here. Uh, math is a joyous equ uh, equation. Ah, a joyous experience. Okay. Anyways, if I know... Right here, I'm going to give x squared and some other stuff. Over here, I'm also going to have x squared and some other stuff, right? If I foiled that out. So I'm going to have x to the fourth, and there's no leading, co there's no coefficient here, there's no coefficient here. 
but there is the leading coefficient out front. So really I'm taking my highest degree. I'm taking the negative two out in front and then the X squared that's going to result here, the X squared that's going to result here. And I'm going to have negative two X to the fourth. That is going to be my leading term. Why is this useful? Well, this can be helpful in deciding our N behaviors, right? Our N behaviors are uh, decided by that leading term and it, whether it's positive or negative. So this one tells me it's a negative quartic and I know how it's going to end on each end. Okay, so looking at our first parts of each guy that we would multiply out, each binomial or trinomial even, each one, that's going to tell us, I can put those together and get my leading term. All right, so we got to find the zeros of a polynomial and state its end behavior. This is nice. It's in factored form, ready to rock, ready to analyze. Oh, this is, this is just so convenient here. So we've got... Uh, Let's get our zeros. So I got a zero at x equals uh, at x equals negative five and x equals negative one with a multiplicity of one. So it goes through the x-axis there. Whereas when it's at x equals two, multiplicity of two, so it will bounce or touch the x-axis, right? Instead of going through it, it's just gonna bounce, all right? So that's all of our zeros and our multiplicity. Cool, taken care of there. Discuss the general appearance of the graph of the function and uh, or using the n behavior, the idea of n behavior. All right, <clears throat> so this is either gonna be an m or a w, and because it's a positive, and how did I know it was an m or a w? I should backtrack. I have an x times an x times an x squared, if it were all foiled out properly, I'd have x to the fourth. So I'm dealing with a leading term of x to the fourth. There are no numbers in front of these x's, and there's no coefficient out front, so it's just one x to the fourth. It's gonna be my first term if I were to multiply all this out. But I don't have to do that to just discuss the general appearance based on its end behavior. So it's gonna look w in shape, and it's going to bounce off of when it's uh, x equals two, which would be this spot over here because it's the most positive Okay, um, so if we were to actually graph it, that's what you'd see. You'd see something like, that should be a bounce. It's going through at negative one. It's going through at negative five. And this is at positive two. Boom, there we go. America, look at that. All right, so let's try this next example together here. Uh, we've got to figure out our x and y intercepts, state the leading coefficient. We got to state the constant term and graph it using the x and y intercepts. So let's start with the x and y intercepts. So x intercepts, well, I'm gonna find that out from each one of my factors. Uh, the first factor doesn't have that usual like adding or subtracting a number, um, but this one be, you can think of it as like plus zero. So zero, zero would be one of them. The second one, negative one, zero. And the third one, five, zero. And how about my y intercept? Well, my y-intercept, if I plugged in zero for x, that's when it's crossing the y-axis, right? Anytime I, anywhere along here, my x value is going to be zero. So if I plug zero in, I'm going to get zero out. And uh, anytime you end up having zero, zero for an x-intercept, it ends up being your y-intercept. Uh, but if I plugged in zero here, zero times anything, this is going to be zero. I don't even have to worry about anything else. All righty. Leading coefficient. Well, the first term... That's going to be negative x times x times x. That's going to be negative x cubed. So the leading coefficient is going to be negative 1. Okay, so that's for that one. Uh, but it's, I think it's helpful to know that our first term is negative x cubed. That's going to help in the graphing. All right, the constant term. Well, since I have this negative x here, um, <clears throat> what ends up happening is my last term is actually just 5x. So no constant term. That's going to be my lowest degree term is 5x, and that's not constant. All right. So if, if this was another binomial up front, we would end up having a, a constant term. Okay. And we'll see an example like that. So let's graph them. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to put some tick marks down. I've got uh, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, and 5, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. I did count that out right. Cool. And I know that this is going to be a negative cubic based on what I had said over here, right? 
That is a negative cubic function. It's going down and to the right based on my end behavior, what I know about that. And that will uh, help me. Whoa, that looks terrible. That'll help me graph this thing or have a general idea of how it's going to work its way through the points, especially when we start dealing with some bounces because we have the second degree, okay, or a multiple C of two. All right, that was, uh, was pretty exciting and fun. So let's uh, we'll keep moving on. All right, so for this one, it's the same type of question as the last one that we just had. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a, a sec to pause this, try it on your own, and then we'll go. I'll have uh, the four parts here um, pop up for you. So hit pause in the video. Hit pause, 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 and then we'll go over it. All right, so here it is. Uh, we'll we'll talk through it a little bit, but I figured this would save a little time if we just have it pop up. So I got my x-intercepts the same way, but this time I actually have to deal with the y-intercepts. I plugged in zero for x, so you'd have negative three squared times five times negative one is negative 45. <clears throat> All right, fun fact, I'm jumping down to c real quick. That constant term is our y-intercept, right? So if we see the constant term, we know what our y-intercept is. If I know what my y-intercept is, it is my constant term. And you can see the math works out the same there. And lastly, I'm popping back up to B. If I multiplied all these x's out, x times x times x times x, I get x to the fourth. There's no number. There's no, there are no numbers in front of the x's. There's no <clears throat> number out in front there. Um, so it's just one is my leading coefficient. So I got a positive quartic. There's my graph. It looks beautiful. It's wonderful. I think we're good. We're moving on. All righty, we're going to write some polynomial functions based on the graph shown. We use the smallest degree possible. And what we mean by that is, well, this is a, an odd degree. So we're going to use, in this case, a degree of three, right? Rather than using some to the degree of five, seven, so on and so forth. So we're going to use a degree of three. So we want to leave it in factored form as well. Wonderful. Who wants to foil all that mess out? All right. So let's start with our zeros here. I've got one right here and here. So my zeros are at, or my x-intercept zeros are at negative one and positive three. But this one is a multiplicity of two. So if I put this into factored form, I'd have x plus one and x minus three squared. But there's a little bit more to it. There could be a leading coefficient out in front. We don't know. So I'm gonna throw an a out in front there. It could be one, it could be something totally different. Um, <clears throat> we do know in this case, it's gonna be positive, right? It is gonna be a positive cubic. Um, so how do we figure out that a? Well, we could take any point on here, uh, not from our factors. Let's take it from somewhere else. Like how about, our y-intercept of nine up there, right? So I can throw in nine for y, and I'm gonna change colors doing this. I throw in nine for y, leave a as is, and what's the x value gonna be? It's gonna be zero. So I'm just substituting a number in there, something that I know is on this graph, much like we would when we're trying to put something into slope-intercept form. I take a point that's on the line, and I take my slope, and I look for my y-intercept. So it's, we're finding missing parts of the graph. Um, it's just a different situation here. So I have nine equals, and then I'd have a times one times the negative three squared is nine. So we might notice here that this is gonna be nine. So I'm gonna divide by nine and divide by nine, and I'll get a equals one. So my final answer here is gonna be y equals x plus one times x minus three squared, since I'm able to leave it in factored form. My lead coefficient is one. That's it. That one worked out very nicely. Sometimes they are different numbers, weird fractions. I don't know. It, the, the sky's the limit. Let's, let's try another one over here. And what I think I might do for this one, um, let's, I'll, I'll pause it and we'll work it. And then uh, I'll let you guys work it. And then I'll, I'll hit play and we'll see the completed problem. All right. There we go. Here's our final answer. If you got it right, awesome. Fantastic. You can, uh, you can ignore what I'm about. Actually, you know what? No, you should listen. It's going to be great stuff, regardless if you got it right. All righty. So I use my y-intercept once again. That's a point that I saw that was on there. If there's another point, sometimes we'll have something uh, labeled on there that you can use. Uh, but if you can see where it crosses the y-intercept, easy money because you're going to use zero for x, which is awesome. Um, we end up getting negative 60 over here. Divide, we get 1 over 30 for our a value. It is a positive 
Quartic. Honestly, I almost forgot this sign right here when I was doing this. And then I went to put negative one over 30 and I was like, wait a sec, this is a positive Quartic function. Where's my mistake? And I went back and I saw that. Okay, so always verify that what you have there makes sense on the graph, okay? All right, we got one more to do. All right, so I've got a graph here, um, and we actually have a point, uh, negative one six that lies in the graph. Now we also have zero, zero, so you could use that, but uh, let's go with this one just to show the, uh, a different way of, or a different point and how, how it works. It works basically the same, but it's just a different point, but just uh, for general practice, okay? So once again, I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna work it out and then hit play so you guys can see it. So please uh, pause it yourselves and try and work the problem. All right, there we have it. Got ourselves a wonderful uh, little equation there. I did throw the X right here next to the two. I think it's more aesthetically pleasing. What do you think there, Jenny? Do you think it's also more aesthetically pleasing? I think she did, wants to get off the couch here, but I don't know. You're having fun doing some math, right? Yeah? Okay. So that's Ruby Dog Jenny on the gram. Um, we use the point, uh, <laughs> we use the point negative one six instead of using our Y intercept. The math will still work out the same. Just depends on what we give you in a problem. So I think uh, it was nice to, to try that. Yeah, so it was lovely. All righty. You guys have a fantastic day. America Freedom Rock and Roll. pre call Honors is just so darn fun. I'm so excited to be into a new chapter. I will see you guys in the next lesson. Woo!